Shabbat Shalom. Und Chanukah Sameach. And for all of you who celebrate Christmas, Happy Christmas. It's um, actually very, very nice that uh, these two feasts come together, will be us being celebrated together and look at this nice lights here and decoration. And I know that we will have another uh, event here afterwards. I tell you, they have prepared very something very nicely, cooked, cooked very good food here, and I was uh, there when they did it. So if every, every one of us had uh, taken uh, from this wonderful food before, then nothing would be left, so it's really nice. <coughs> we still uh, we celebrate Hanukkah and we have a Hanukkah concert and I'm sure that it will be a very good concert today and uh, I'm sorry uh, I feel sorry for those who have to go and celebrate Christmas uh, uh, for some uh, it's a very nice blessed family feast and maybe you can uh, watch it afterwards uh, per, via video but I'm not sure if there will be if it will be recorded it's it will be recorded praise the Lord Today I want to talk about Hanukkah and a little bit about Christmas. You remember, I hope, this story, the Hanukkah story. This story um, resembles many Jewish stories or celebrations. They wanted to kill us, to annihilate us. We, we won, and we had the victory, and let us eat, celebrate, let us celebrate. This is why Hanukkah is celebrated. It's happy, joyful, eight days, for eight days. And, of course, they are eating. And you know that uh, there's much to eat. Not all of it is very healthy. It's very oily and sweet food. <coughs> Last time we spoke about the fact that the Jewish tradition explains it all. Why, for instance, do we eat sweet things, sweet food? That's a question. Why do we eat sweet things? Question mark. Why? <laughs> Do I have to ask you to get up and do some, to move and uh, get warmed up? Why are you so sleepy this morning? Why? Why do we eat sweet things? Because it's a festival. Because we are joyful. We are happy. But 
important because sugar is giving, uh, pushes us up and we can dance. Why do we eat this um, oily stuff with butter and oil prepared? Uh, fried food. Why do we do this? Why do we eat oily food? Because you remember this miracle has to do with oil. The miracle. Of course, then we have to eat food which contains lots of oil. Right? In this way, we can better remember what has happened in the past. You eat latkes. Ah, you remember the miracle the, with the oil. And then you understand you need another miracle. <coughs> because after, after eating oily stuff and sweet stuff uh, for eight days, you need another miracle, Hanukkah miracle. Because you have to fit in the clothes that you were wearing before Hanukkah. I wish you such a Hanukkah miracle. And, but today we can still eat and be joyful because they wanted to kill us, but we won. We had the victory. Let us rejoice and eat. I want to um, draw your attention to the fact that they wanted to kill us, to annihilate us. The Greeks, Antiochus, the Greek king, tried to annihilate our people from the perspective of uh, a believer of faith. Uh, from the perspective of faith and identification, uh, who we are, how we live, what we celebrate, what we read, and how we eat. Concerning all these things, you find a very clear explanations in the Torah. So they forced us to assimilate. We should become like all other nations, all other people. That we should not celebrate our traditional feasts that the Lord had given us as Jewish people. So that we would n no longer have our rules, eating rules so that we would eat like everybody else, like all the non-Jews. We, we should not no longer have a history and no longer have the, the Torah. We were supposed to, to be like all other people, non-Jewish people, to dress like all others, so that we look like all others, all other people so that we would no longer have a, a cruel circumcision, so-called cruel circumcision, so that we would be like anybody else. In the beginning, they treated us in a friendly way. They said to us, oh, why, why do you need all this, these regulations? Eat some pork, such delicious pork or or eat these uh, certain seafood. Look how pinky and nice it looks.
Why do you need a New Year celebration in autumn? And why do you need something sad that is connected with uh, with return to God and with uh, repentance? And um, let us be joyful. Why do you know? The, do you need the Torah? It's old-fashioned. You do not need the Torah. Who? Who would interest? Who would? Who is interested today in whatever had been said in the past by Moshe? Look at what Aristoteles said. Look at the Greek philosophers, what they have said. Look, look at science. And you are occupied and with Torah, and you try to keep the law of the Torah, and so on. <coughs> This reminds us of today, how they deal with us today. And they try to explain us to us in a friendly in a friendly way how nice it is to be like everyone else. What a high culture this is. What science is telling us that is for the clever people, for the intelligent people. This is the same as it was in the past. It was always like this, if they wanted to annihilate us. Take away the Torah, what is written in the Torah, take away the feasts, take away our food, or what is remaining what is remaining of our identity. We remember that our mother and father were Jews. We remember the Holocaust. We see the old pictures in, um, in a photo book. What meaning, uh, what kind of meaning is left for the Jewish people? If there was no history with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then there is no purpose, there is no meaning. We, we just Germans or Ukrainians or Russians. You, un you must understand, with, without the Torah, the Jewish people have no purpose, there is no, no meaning in all of this without the Torah. If you take the Torah away, you have uh, killed us or annihilated us. And the enemy tried to do that with us. First, he came with high science, with education, high education, sports, high culture. And then some of us were not agreeing with this. Then they started to force us. Now you, you eat the pork, you have to. And cut all the Torah scrolls. And don't, don't you dare to circumcise your son. And this happened again and again in Jewish history. At the beginning, they were friendly. From the perspective of high education and culture. And then they forced, uh, forced us for those, those who didn't agree. <coughs> and that happened at Hanukkah. They tried to kill us, to annihilate us. But those who were resisting, who didn't want to do this, who didn't agree, 
those, regardless of all, regardless how stupid for you the Torah may be, regardless of how old the Torah seems to be for you, and regardless of how many nice things you are offering us, I, in nevertheless, I stay faithful. I am faithful to God. There is no meaning with, for us as people without God. There is no meaningful meaning for us without the Torah. <coughs> and thanks to those people who understood this, we we had the victory, and now we can celebrate. Thanks to the Most High God who, who created such people in our people. The, those were just. But they were killed. Those who were just uh, resisted. With the, and they won uh, with the help of God, with the miracles He did for them. <coughs> we do not know really for sure in the, if uh, there were really eight days of uh, this oil miracle, but, but our tradition Tells, tells us, after, after the temple was cleansed again, there was only one, they only found one little um, oil. This oil only should reach for one day, the oil they found in the temple. But usually, you needed one full week to uh, to make a new oil, new kosher oil. But the legend, the tradition, tells us that the oil lasted for eight days, which was a miracle. That was a miracle. And before this, before this, there were many other victory miracles. We won, and the people of Israel live. Thanks to Hanukkah, they are alive. And there was a, um, and uh, the sense of the Mashiach, of the Messiah, developed after this Hanukkah miracle. After Hanukkah, the Messiah got a very important role. For some people, he had to be a king. Uh, a king who has the victory over everything and who leads us into liberty, into freedom. He would be the one to show us how to live uh, in justice. <coughs> a martyr who would die for his people. This is not something we only read in the New Testament. That was the expectation of people after the time of Hanukkah. Because after this, after Hanukkah happened, this worldview developed. That one person can be sacrificed or die for one people. 
And when our Mashiach Yeshua had to die, the high priest uh, who was against him um, spoke prophetically. It's better if one person dies for one people than a whole people for one person. He quoted what was said at the time of Hanukkah. This thought was very deeply connected. The Mashiach, the Messiah, had to become light, like the light of Hanukkah. He should be like uh, the light in the temple, an eternally an eternally um, light, an eternal light. Those of you who have, uh, those who have read the New Testament, do you see the Messiah in Hanukkah? Without Hanukkah, we would not have a New Testament. Without Hanukkah, we would not have a New Testament. Without Hanukkah, our people would not be ready for the Messiah, for the coming of the Messiah. And there would be no sense of celebrating Christmas without Hanukkah. Because the people would not have been ready for his birth. We won and we waited for the Messiah. And when I preached last Shabbat, when I spoke about the I spoke about the fact that there was a very strong expectation for the coming of the Messiah. There was, they cried out to, to, to wait, waiting for the Messiah. And when we read in the, the Gospel of Matthew, let us open the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. This is the traditionally the first book of the New Testament. And then pay attention how it starts. Listen intensely. The book that the book that many Jews regard as an anti-Semitic book, but look how it starts with the words that are written here. The first verse says. <coughs> the record of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. You know it, you have read it. Let us really breathe in this, these words. The record of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Last Shabbat, after my sermon, uh, one person wrote to me, You have been talking too much about Jesus as a human being, about his Jewishness, 
But he is much more than that. He is the Son of God. He is the God that came in his flesh. But, yes, but at the time of Hanukkah, and at the time when, when Christians are celebrating Christmas, it's, it's important to speak about his coming in the flesh because he was born. The first chapter of the Gospel of John, at the beginning, there was the Word, there is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything was created through this, and is kept through this. And then it is written, and then it is written, the Word became flesh. And it's um, uh, staying with us tabernacling with us and uh, filled with uh, full of grace and we have seen his glory and this is written in the gospel according to John and we say yes and amen because one of the words names of the Messiah according to the prophecies of uh, Isaiah is Emmanuel, God with us. This is why the Word became flesh. This is why He is above everything. This is why He is e equal with God, uh, who has created everything. He came to be with us. He took, He became flesh. He accepted to become flesh in order to be like you, in order to be like me, in order, in order to understand your pain, your sicknesses, your hunger, your nerves, your suffering, your disappointments, in order to understand you. And in order to be able to feel with you, to have empathy, to feel what you feel. This is why he came and became flesh. And to die for you in suffering instead of you in your place to suffer and to die and then to rise from the dead. Like you, like you, in the same way, like you will be resurrected one day. This is why he came and became flesh. But we will speak a little bit more detailed about his body. <coughs> The, the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That's how the New Testament is started. That's how the Gospel is started. And when you read how everything here is written and everything happens, It's written how Mary received through the Holy Spirit, became pregnant. And how Joseph, who was engaged, who was engaged with Mary, was how it was uh, explained to Joseph that the baby was from the Holy Spirit and how Yeshua was born and how the wise 
men came and worshipped the Lord, how they followed a certain star uh, in order to find the king. And the, following this star that moved from east to west, this star that stopped upon you Jerusalem and then moved to Bethlehem and the star stayed and stopped over Bethlehem the place where Yeshua was born there were many um, many scientific um, efforts to find out the status of the planets it was a miracle the scientists couldn't find out but it was a miracle how this star moved <coughs> and when they these wise men went back home with, without telling herod where where the baby was Herod um, sent out his soldiers to kill all children below two years in the area. That, that was his intention, to kill the one who was expected as Messiah. And in chapter 2, Verses 17 and 18, we read Then what had been spoken through Jeremiah, <coughs> the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Rama, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for their children, for her children, and she refused to be comforted because they were no more. Do you know where Jeremiah wrote this in chapter 38? That chapter where it is written that the people of Israel will never be annihilated. Nobody can kill it. No, ne, neither Antiochus, uh, no, neither Haman, the cursed one. And in Jeremiah it is written where it is written that the Jewish people cannot be annihilated. The Almighty God, the Most High God says there will be days coming when I will make a new covenant, cut a new covenant with the house of Israel. Do you see the connection? The people of Israel is alive because a new covenant has been made. Rachel mourns for the for her children and doesn't get comforted the lord sees this mourning and weeping and the lord sees this and the people of israel are alive And when I think about all of this, we want to <coughs> open uh, the Gospel of Luke. I will read those passages while explaining 
but trying to explain to you that uh, Christmas is a Jewish feast. No, today I want to read a passage about the birth of Yeshua, which normally I don't read. Luke chapter 2. Jesus is born from verse 8 to verse 14, v verses 8 to 14. <coughs> Luke 2, verses 7 to 14. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. <coughs> she is reading from verse 8. They, they proclaimed great joy, great joy that for all people, not only for the Jews, for all people, for all peoples, for all nations, good news of great joy. Regardless of which nation you come, This great joy is for all people. What, it, what is it about? Verse 11. <coughs> for today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. <coughs> the Mashiach the Messiah, the Lord, it's a great joy. This is the joy. Yes, surely I don't think that the Messiah was born in December. But still, it is a great event. And when many Christians celebrating in December, it's still a great joy. The Messiah is born, the Savior, the Lord. And in the Gospel of Matthew, many things happen in, in dreams. Joseph, um, Joseph understands that Mary 
is pregnant. And because he was a good person, he didn't want to stone her, but he wanted to leave her. He lay down, he slept. I cannot imagine how he could sleep in such a situation. He, his engaged um, um, young woman was pregnant. He was not having an intimate relationship with, with her and he lied down. I admire him for this. He slept and then he had a dream and he heard a voice that this is from the Lord. And imagine he believed this. All of us are dreamers. Some um, dream more than others. All of us dream, but we do not believe every dream, but there are sometimes dreams from the Lord. And Joseph had this dream and heard how he should act. Then again he had a dream. Go to Egypt, it said in the dream. Save yourself, go to Egypt. Then another dream, go back to Israel. Again, again, uh, the Lord led through dreams. The Lord can lead you through dreams. Do you remember what we have been reading today? If you were at the Shahari today, the first service, we, we read about Joseph, about the dream of Joseph. It's the Torah portion of today. There were They were uh, talking about several dreams. Then even Pharaoh had dreams. These dreams were from the Lord. They could have been Re received then a terrible dreams, but the Lord gave these dreams and Joseph was able to interpret these dreams. And here I see a certain connection in a certain way. There. there, the word was important, the dream, and here another dream, and these are connected. And it has to do with bringing great joy. I don't tell you the immediate interpretation or understanding, but I want to speak about what Pharaoh experienced in his dream and how Joseph interpreted the dream and I wish you for Hanukkah and Christmas and for the new year. When Pharaoh saw these dreams, had these dreams, the, the seven fat cows, and then the skinny cows, they, 
who ate up the fat cows than wheat, grain that um, died and was eating up this grain. And the interpretation was as follows. There will come seven years with abundance and rich harvests, and after these seven years, there will be another seven years, which will be terrible and cruel, and so that they would no longer think about these uh, rich years. These second seven years will be so terrible that they would not remember the good years they were before. And I, I um, saw a connection, a bridge to today. The Word became flesh. The Messiah was born. Great joy. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, the Most High God, with us. He is with us. The Messiah came to die for our sins. He rose from the dead. He get, went to heaven. He sent His Holy Spirit. He gives us a new life. And He will come again. He will return. Hallelujah. A great joy. And now I come back to this sentence. There will be seven years, seven meager and hard years, so that you will know, remember the good years. But there is a lesson here I want to give to you. I wish, I wish you, the next years, the following years that will come, would be those such years that that we would never think back to the uh, back the suffering years. And at the time of Yeshua's birth, they were expecting and this, the Messiah. And I know that um, many are going through hard times in their lives here. And uh, we dream something. We cry out uh, to the Lord. So many things are difficult here for some people. And, but I know that time will come that when we will have so much joy that we will never um, remember the years of suffering. The Lord will give restoration, restore everything in Yeshua. I didn't see this dream, but I believe it. The time of Hanukkah, the time of Christmas, for some it's the time of the New Year. This is a time when people are more open for miracles and where people talk about miracles. And this is a time when people uh, wish good things to others and wish them a miracle of God. You may think I'm, 
I'm strange, but um, I really believe in miracles and wonders. And we can ask God for a miracle. I believe what other people uh, would call a um, fairy tale. I'm not a small boy anymore, but somehow I'm still a little bit naive and I believe in miracles and wonders. And I wish you too. I believe that Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year, the Lord can do, the Lord is able uh, to do miracles. May they happen and may the coming years let us forget times of suffering. May the coming years help you forget the past, the past years of weeping, of suffering, of pain. You would say, what was this about? You can receive it in the name of Yeshua. Amen. She